What's up, gangsters? So, a few years ago, I made this video called The Best of Trash Troma Classics, in which I took a look at five, well, Troma Classics, directed by Lloyd Kaufman. Check out that video if, like, half of the words in that previous sentence didn't make sense to you. But basically, in short, Troma Entertainment is an American independent film production and distribution company co-founded by Lloyd Kaufman in the mid-70s that specializes in, well, Trauma movies. I used these adjectives last time to describe a trauma movie, but let's just call them what they are. Trauma movies. And guess fucking what? Lloyd Kaufman directed a new trauma movie. Hashtag Shakespeare's Shitstorm. I actually had the privilege to check it out and I was like, oh my god, you know, like it's the 2020s, you know, like quite a different time compared to Toxic Avenger and all that stuff from the 80s. You know, like does, does he still have it in him to, to create like a classic trauma movie? Well, short answer, he sure fucking does. Stick around till after this little review, as I actually sat down with Lloyd Calvin himself to discuss the movie and, well, everything basically. But first, um, my quick thoughts on the movie. Ah. This always just feels good. The movie, at its core, is a tale of revenge, in which scientist Prospero, played by Kaufman himself, wants to get back at his sister and her husband, who run this big, corrupt pharmaceutical company, for ruining his career and indirectly his reputation, which he plans to do by <laughs> means of a rather convoluted plan. I'll let you discover the specifics of that at your own time, but it definitely involves a literal shitstorm. It is also an adaptation of William Shakespeare's The Tempest, which I for one wasn't familiar with. I mean, I read into it a little bit. It does seem like he took a few liberties here and there. And it's also a musical, not unlike uh, Lloyd Kaufman's earlier trauma classic, Poultry Guide, Night of the Chicken Dead. And I'm, I'm generally not the biggest fan of musicals. I feel like all the, the song and dance, you know, like kind of like interrupts the, the flow of the movie. But here with um, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm with only like one song every 15 minutes or so, it, it really didn't bother me that much. Plus, you know, like some of the songs, they're, uh, they're pretty funny. But first and foremost, it's a fucking trauma movie. And trust me, it delivers. So yeah, expect some poop, boobs, and gore at the same time if you want. Really, it's it's in old-fashioned bad taste. It's offensive. Not a lot of people and groups coming out of this one looking good. Especially the entitled Snowflake SJW generation and Big Pharma, the two big targets of the movie's social commentary and satire elements, if you will. And perhaps New Jersey, but hey. It's trauma in the digital age. But it does still look and feel like classic trauma with its contrasted, saturated look. Some scenes rely a little more heavy on the CGI, understandably so, but unfortunately some of the gore does as well. Although granted, really the, the majority of it is classic practical effects and oh man, they sure as hell do go out with a bang. On top of that, we get some pretty fun characters with Kate McGargle, is that how you pronounce it? As Prospero's blind daughter, being a personal favorite. Really, like, like her comedic delivery and timing, it's so good. Yeah, really, like, the only real complaint I have with this movie is, you know, like, its whole anti-woke SJW aspect of it all. You know, like, it just feels a little dated and, like, forced, somewhat cringy. But, you know, I'm... I'm willing to just roll with it. So, with all of that being said, um, in general, you know, like, trauma movies, they're definitely not for everybody, so naturally, hashtag Shakespeare's shitstorm isn't either. It's, really, it's, it's basically as simple as this. If you've enjoyed Lloyd Kaufman's trauma work from the past, you'll get a kick out of this one as well. So, really, if you do, definitely recommend it to check it out if you get the chance to. So, um, like I said, I had the opportunity to sit down with Lloyd Kaufman. Like, we, we've talked for like some 90 minutes, um, Lloyd Kaufman himself did mostly. So I, I did really have to trim it down a lot, and I obviously somehow managed to screw up recording, so I missed bits of the audio, so please bear with me a little bit. It was my first time doing this. I, I think I managed to make it into a somewhat coherent, fun little conversation. Um, check it out. How do you pronounce your name, Jorn? Yeah, so yeah, it is Jeroen. 
Jeroen. Jeroen. Jeroen, I, I can pronounce Jeroen, yeah, Jeroen. nice, thank you. So, Lloyd, <laughs> prior to this interview, I was reading into a little bit, you know, like refresh my memory, but, you know, let's go to your IMDb page, and I saw you have, like, a couple dozen acting credits, just from, like, this year to last year. Have you been very busy acting? Like, uh, how do you pick these projects? Do people approach you? Good question, and thank you for noticing that. IMDb, uh, I don't look at it, and a lot of it is incorrect where people put me up. That's what, yeah, a lot of it says like a post-production or like announced or so, and there were so many, yeah. I'm like, is he doing but, all of that? Uh, I do a lot of uh, underground movies to help the, uh, you know, if I'm in them, uh, somebody's gonna show, you know, the trauma fans are very loyal, they buy everything. And uh, in some cases, uh, uh, you know, we started Trauma Now, the uh, streaming service, about a thousand, you know, 50 years of our trauma movies. And um, we keep uh, making new movies and uh, uh, we keep acquiring and whenever we have money, uh, instead of drugs and uh, a fancy car that we don't own, we buy uh, movies, collections of uh, independent movie companies that have gone out of business because the uh, movie picture uh, industry worldwide is uh, very much controlled by a very small uh, how shall we say it? Let's, oligarchic. Let's just call them what they are. Yeah. Oligarchic oligopoly. Man, your English is great. It's oh, unbelievable. thank you. I appreciate that. We just made a movie, a big movie that opens in New York, April eighth. Uh, April eighth. Uh, it called hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Uh, it uh, it will come to Europe at some point, but uh, right now it's opening in New York City at the Museum of the Movie Image on April eighth, and then two or three theaters in the. Uh, in the uh, where we're, in New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn. But uh, yeah. at any rate, the, the point about the hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm is we shot eight days in Albania. We were the very first American uh, company to uh, have the courage to take a shot uh, 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 and film in uh, uh, Albania. And they gave us a terrific deal. If you would like to see hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, uh, Rocco can send you the uh, link. Well, or Lucky can send you I'll, the link. I'll tell you something, Lloyd. I've had that privilege already, and I've seen the movie. Wow. Wonderful. Loved it. Oh, thank and you very, very much. But one of the first questions that I was wondering, well, that I thought of while watching, I was a little skeptical, Lloyd, I'll have to admit that, you know, like, big fan of the Toxic Avenger, but it, that was like some 40 years ago, right? I was like, yes. does, does Lloyd, does Troma still have it in them to produce, like, a classic Troma movie? And I don't want to spoil it to the people that yet have to see it. I think you very much managed to do so. And I was wondering, like, on set, did you notice that, like, cast and crew, that they were excited, like, aware that you guys were potentially producing, like, a, a modern trauma classic? Was, how was the vibe on set? We have a very long period of casting and putting together the production crew. And everybody on that movie was a fan. I mean, they were there not for the money. Uh, the, the, the DP came in from California, uh, uh, got, uh, you know, for about 10%, uh, very small salary. And everybody the same. They all took very little uh, money. And uh, they all were excited about making a trauma movie. And it was the best. Uh, the Albanian crew, by the way, was terrific. And... Uh, they trained the whales, uh, they, they got the uh, laxative for the whales. Uh, again, I don't want to be a spoiler, but... Uh, I know what you're talking easy. about. <laughs> and, uh, there's a little known fact that apparently whales have corn in their, um, in their shite. In I, their I think I might have seen some of that appear on screen. Anyway, uh, Albania was a great place to film. Uh, we saved a shitload of money, they were great to us. And after we became the first, uh, other movie companies, much bigger than ours, have now gone to us, Albania because we, uh, our industry is a very uh, timid. Uh, they're afraid to do anything original. They don't want to take any chances. They, all they care about is, uh, uh, you know, how famous they are or mm -hmm. uh, how much money they're making or uh, how do they rip off uh, Spider-Man and instead of Spider-Man do Daddy Long Legs Man or something. <laughs> You know, I hear Steven Spielberg's doing a movie with, with a, a boy with two heads. Well, we'll do better. We'll do a girl with three heads. You know, that kind of crap. Yeah. You know, we do original stuff. We do stuff that uh, uh, the French say that uh, I'm the uh, du, 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 uh, Duchamp. I'm the Duchamp of uh, underground film. The Duchamp was a Dadaist, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he 
signed a Euronova in 1907 or 1913. Mm, yes, of course. Hung it on the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah. Fist fights broke out. We've had a similar thing where sometimes audiences don't get it, you know. They but, don't but, get trauma and people get very upset. But the hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, the cast, the crew, um, uh, Philippe Mello from Portugal, a, a big time uh, jazz musician, yeah. composer, uh, uh, did the score uh, with a full orchestra. I mean, we, we just had the most devoted uh, people in, in, uh, together with us. And uh, it was a very difficult movie. And it took about, I think we shot for six or seven weeks. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, including Albania. And uh, I had, uh, I, after the principal photography was completed, I, I did a personalized tribute to Alfred Hitchcock, one of my favorites, and I'm sure one of your favorites. Uh, I actually had vertigo. Oh, wow. <laughs> after the, you know, being, a, uh, you know, there's just so much pressure and so many, you know, we had two or three units going, you know, it was like a circus. And, <laughs> um, but everybody loves it. Look at us, 50 years of trauma. We've not, again, I'm knocking on wood. We've never had a, uh, a serious injury. No. I don't, well, I mean, we've had scrapes, but that's about it. Uh, and we put up signs everywhere on our set. Three rules of trauma uh, productions, and they have to be good, uh, beautifully done graphically with Toxy, uh, you know, Toxy says in a bubble, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, safety to humans, safety to people's property. If you're filming in somebody's home, don't put a cigarette on the wall like the grip did on Saturday Night Fever. And I got, when I yelled at him, I was the one that the union uh, embarrassed in front of everybody. <laughs> uh, and then the third rule, which we write smaller, uh, make a good movie. Yeah. That's the least of your concerns. <laughs> exactly. Life, human life uh, is much more yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Toxy uh, has his own uh, billion dollar triple A movie by a wonderful young director, Malcolm Macon Blair. and. Uh, and uh, of course, Elijah Wood. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that because I saw that there is indeed the, 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 the Toxic Avenger reboot uh, coming up that you are uh, producing, I guess, with Michael Hurst together. Yes, um, Michael is producing. And I saw that it was a timeline and it was first announced like some 10 years ago and I was like, is this really happening? But as I take it from you, it is really happening. Yeah, it was shot. It's been shot. I was there in Bulgaria. <laughs> And uh, it's going to be great. I read the script uh, several times, different versions of it, and I uh, gave some notes. But uh, basically, it's Macon Blair's yeah, Lloyd exactly. Kaufman's Toxic Avenger. But it has your complete blessing. Oh, yeah. Good God. Uh, he's great. I mean, he's only directed one movie, but it's uh, brilliant. You can see he's terrific. I've seen <laughs> he, he, he's an, uh, an actor first, I, I guess. Yes. He, he was in. Well, he, wrote, uh, he wrote with his childhood friend, uh, uh, Green Room. The, and, uh, the Blue, Blue, the Blue asked, something. Yeah. Those, those are great movies. He's, he, he, he knows trauma better than you or I do. Okay. He's seen Terra Firma many times. He's seen Combat Shock. He's seen Cannibal uh, yeah, of yeah, Musical. Yeah, yeah. He's seen Tromeo and Juliet. I don't think he has seen the hashtag Shakespeare shit stuff. Rock I'm afraid to man. show it to him. I don't want to influence him with the, no, the you magnificence. I don't want him to feel, you know, a little bit inferior when he sees the genius uh, how it's done. It's <laughs> and yeah. and he and legendary casted Peter Dinklage uh, as Toxy. That is because I read it and it's like it might be a rumor, but so that's actually no, happening. That's shot true. and oh wow, hundred percent true. And that I don't. I think that's better than and more gutsy than trauma ever. I never. I personally couldn't have come up with something that original. That is and I know Michael Hers is totally delighted. Uh, and, uh, you know, it'll, it it will be a, a real movie. It'll be original. It'll be interesting. It deals with uh, some. Very important themes. Got the great, uh, rock, uh, you know, well, I don't know what you call it, but modern score to it. Uh, wonderful bands. Uh, and for the trauma fans, I, I was there. So I can tell you, you're going to see lots of Easter eggs. Exactly. You know, uh, James Gunn put in uh, uh, trauma Easter eggs in his uh, series uh, Peacemaker. And, uh, uh, but uh, when you see Make It, the fans of trauma are going to really enjoy. Uh, you know, they're going to feel part of it. Uh, they're going to, and they're the reason we're here, the fans. That's the awesome. only reason we're still around is people like you and our fans for 50 years. So I've, I've seen uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, and obviously a big part of the movie is um, 
making fun of the social justice warriors and their politically correctness gone mad and I was wondering is that a sort of like a personal commentary coming from you as, as sort of like a response to people that maybe over the years have criticized trauma movies for perhaps being politically incorrect? We have been, I've been cancelled a few times but it doesn't matter I mean the fans demolish Twice I got beaten up, uh, and the fans demolished the uh, third-rate uh, bloggers, you know, third-level scumbags. You know, they try to build their uh, career on, on on killing somebody else's career. We had a very good senator here in New York who used to work on Saturday Night Live, famous TV show. He's from Minneapolis, and he got drummed out of uh, being a senator from Minneapolis because uh, 30 years ago he did he did like a kind of a goofy thing with a woman sleeping on the airplane where I don't know if you ever saw it but it was nothing and he was a great senator good guy and he got kicked uh, out of uh... my daughter worked for him in Washington DC and and a uh, I don't want to use a bad word but a, um, a nasty New York State uh, senator who's full of absolute shite uh, and in the same party as Al Franken she, she was yapping, 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 uh, you know, how she's going to make her bones on getting rid of a, of a fine, uh, open-minded, uh, slightly socialistic uh, senator. God damn it. That's, that's a, a, a great segue to that. So I've been making videos on YouTube for over a decade already. Yeah. I, no. I, I actually made a video. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, very good. Thank you. I, I actually made a video on trauma uh, in which I um, reviewed five of the trauma classics, I would say. So you have like Toxic Avenger, Class of Newcomb High, Terra Firmer, uh, Night of Chicken Dad, and um, Tromeo and Juliet. Um, yeah. I showed a lot of footage in that video, like boobs, gore, everything. That's something I can't really do now anymore. Like I notice it's becoming a lot more strict. Um, so I YouTube. You're uh, talking about YouTube. Y yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, they. Uh, very so, so, so I've been contemplating to, you know, like maybe change my ways a little bit, like bleep out the swear words, not show that much, like gore and and boobs. Have you ever contemplated making like compromises to please theater streaming services, or have you always just? I, I uh, one of the regrets I have is that I I, I didn't compromise enough. You know, I'm not like Edith Piaf, je uh, regrette beaucoup. And one of them is that I, I, I fought too much. And mm. I, I remember having dinner with uh, the, uh, John Avelson, who was kind of my mentor. He uh, directed Cry Uncle, which is on Truman now, hilarious. And then right after that, Rocky, on which I was uh, an important uh, yeah. producer, you know, line producer, whatever, in Philadelphia. And uh, he, he, we had dinner years later, uh, and uh, he, he said, "No way, you, nobody's going to hire you. <laughs> you, you you're too. Uh, they're afraid of you." About hashtag Shakespeare. Oh, let me say one more thing. Of course, you asked me a very good question about uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. The reason I waited so long to make it, uh, the Tempest, on which it's based, is my favorite Shakespearean play. Michael Hers and I are both very well educated, very well read. Michael has seen every movie you can imagine. He's seen everything. Even the new stuff, he just doesn't yap about it. He's a very personal, you know, stays to himself. Mm -hmm. he's, not, uh, he's not a narcissist like uh, Uncle Lloyd here. So, um, uh, but the, the point is, we, 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 we uh, you know, we, we've studied Shakespeare. And, uh, you know, we, 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 uh, with Romeo and Juliet, I was too young to, to, to play Prospero. I wanted to, mm -hmm. to be Prospero. And uh, I know that hashtag Shakespeare Shitstone will never uh, make a profit until well after Firmer, Tromeo and Juliet they, they all take about 25 years to become uh, profitable you know because word of mouth yeah Terra Firmer nobody uh, you know and the rating board in our country ruined a lot of our uh, theatrical engagements because they chopped up the movie and I did have to compromise but not willingly Is and, the uh, we would put back we'd put back the footage uh, once we got the R rating so I have um this trauma release of uh, Terra Firma, wow. and that nice. one is obviously like chock full of go It doesn't seem like you made compromise for this, but then I imagine this being like the uncut like director's uh, That cut. is the uncut director's cut, but uh, uh, in order to get into the theaters, we required an R-rated version. Yeah. And if you can, if there's any way you could get the R-rated version, I think it's on Troma Now. Hmm. And the first month is free on Troma Now. 
The R-rated version of Terra Firma is hilarious because uh, uh, I step into the picture uh, to explain. Uh, right here, ladies and gentlemen, somebody in the dialogue says the word pussy, but the uh, MPAA rating board in the United States uh, uh, made us cut it out. So instead, here's a picture of a kitten. You know that kind of. I explain each. Uh, uh, you know each uh, uh, thing that you saw that might look a little uh, uh, adult. Uh, in some cases, they were ridiculous cuts. You know, it's absurd. And uh, we got the R rating with my making fun of the MPAA cuts. Exactly. Those fuckers. Those fuckers had to go watch. They had to watch it and un and and have it drilled into their head that we know they're full of shit. We know they favor Bruce Willis serious violence over our it cartoon violence. We know that they put MPA the rating board put. Uh, uh, one of the reasons that uh, so many small companies went out of business yeah. because all they had, they didn't have uh, John Travolta. All they had was special effects, horror, whatever. Uh, and if you have to cut all that stuff and chop it up, and it, it, it's cancer. Right. The ending reminded me a lot of, let's say, John Carpenter's The Thing meets Brian Yusnes' Society, if you're familiar with that one. And maybe a little bit of, I want to say, like the climax of Peter Jackson's Bring that dead alive, or maybe more close to home, the, the, the climax of, of poultry guys. There was a lot happening, and I'm wondering, like, what was your thought process of some of these mutated creatures that you put on screen? Like, how did you come up with that? Well, the uh, the head of special effects, Doug Sackman, has uh, uh, was my assistant for many years. As were the producers of uh, Hashtag uh, Shakespeare Shitstorm, uh, John Brennan and. Uh, 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 Justin Martell, also my wife, the commissioner, uh, uh, has retired from her job as commissioner of the state of New York movie industry, and she uh, was uh, another producer. Uh, so everybody in the film had kind of worked for us, and and the guy who who did the actual sculpting and the creation of the uh, of the interesting animals, uh, the, uh, which were also very good jeu de mots, uh, you know, good puns. Uh, and uh, he did. Uh, he was. He came from from Hollywood, and he he just loved the idea of uh, of, of fucking with people. You know, he really had an opportunity to do it to go beyond. You know, push the envelope. <laughs> so a lot of those are his idea, and um, uh, my end my end costume. I don't hate to say costume. But whatever <laughs> yeah. you oh, it was a costume. It wasn't real. Transformation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he created it. Uh, um, you know, based on the script, of course, but uh, which was based on Shakespeare's script. Uh, but uh, uh, he did a great job. He also uh, uh, we saw that he had done uh, uh, the first Sharknado uh, and oh. uh, maybe another one. Uh, so we knew he could operate on a modest budget, and uh, by George, he did a one. He came, he and his crew came out. Uh, they they definitely didn't make money on it. They basically did everything for the cost of supplies, and uh, you've never seen anything like it. And and I had I had not seen a society, but I've seen it since, and I do agree that uh, that our film uh, has a couple of shots that look right. like society. But uh, uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm is a uh, how do I say it? Uh, it's a masterpiece. I don't think society was a masterpiece. It was good. I, I, I think society. As far as the other guy, who was the other guy you mentioned? The nasty guy. Um, what other nasty guy did I say? Oh, I said like the he thing. The smart, the Halloween guy. John Carpenter's the thing. I mean, yeah, practical effect wise, it's he's uh, a genius. it reminded me no of it. He's one of the great directors, but he's not very pleasant. Oh, that I wouldn't know. I, I very rude to the trauma team. I think I have like I have a little stack here of some movies that I want to show you. Like maybe it'll bring up some memories as well for you because um, obviously we're close to Belgium here. Um, some of these titles they're sort of like trauma related. If you talk about um, Rabbit Grannies, which yes. should probably ring a bell, and maybe a lot more obscure Maniac Nurses. It's not the greatest release. This I don't know well, if you're. It's a if, beautiful. It's the first uh, trauma movie made in uh, Romania, long before. In fact, the guy who produced Rabbit Grannies, Johan uh, from the Bustang. Since uh, he also produced uh, the uh, nurses uh, in Romania, and and also parts of the family. You ought to see parts of the family because um, all sorts of interesting people are in it. Uh, Debbie Rashan, uh, I'm in. I got a big part, uh, and uh, some famous European actors and uh, uh, Andreas. Uh, 
another you know underground filmmaker from Germany. Oh, Andreas Schnaas. Schnaas, yes. Yes. <laughs> he might have gotten cut out. I can't remember, but oh. we we had some fun together. I'm in one of his films too, uh, Schnaas. Is he do, did, did he do the the violent shit movies? Is that him or yes, is that yeah yeah, yeah exactly? Yeah, I'm not in those, but I am in one. I'm in one more. Can't remember honestly, but Debbie's in it also. Debbie was on. So one question that I don't even know if my audience would care for this is something that I personally am very interested in. Um, how early on in the production of hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm? Did you know that you were going to include the famous car stunt scene that originated from Kabuki Man? Because that was probably the, the, the moment I laughed the, the most in the movie. Because it's such a running inside joke and was it always going to be in it or... That was in the We put that, the Gabe Friedman, with whom I wrote The Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Day, who worked for us for 10 years and edited many of our classics. He, uh, uh, that was his idea, put it there. He, 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 Gabe and I and William Shakespeare came up with the basic storyline and then Brandon Basham wrote it and uh, made it funny and made it work. And uh, uh, he's shooting a film that I'm producing now, uh, as I said, the kind of a fromage to uh, Saturday Night Fever, oh, yes. in which I, I uh, had a pretty important uh, role. Uh, on the crew, not in the acting. I'm in it, but uh, a fewer seconds than uh, I'm in Suicide Squad. Um, so, uh, did you want to talk about uh, I Need You Dead, the film by Rocco I, Zellenberger? I am. I, I received a screener. I, I, it's, it's on my watch list basically really? after today. Um, I know you play it's, part uh, in it. it. It's quite, uh, we don't distribute it. It's too good. But uh, it's an art film. It's a real art film with lots of blood and guts, but it's uh, uh, very uh, haunting, psychological, as well as uh, funny and uh, trauma-ish. But it's, I think, more, uh, how do I say it? Perhaps more... Classy? Mood-driven. Oh, mood-driven, mood okay. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, Rocco sent me a screener. I, I told him that, um, I basically gave him a, a, my word that I was gonna check it out. At the very least, maybe do a video on it for my, for my channel uh, as well. well I'm, uh, it'd be I'm, nice. Yeah. Uh, again, we have no horse in the game, because, no dog in the game. He's got a, uh, uh, his own shitty distributor. He doesn't need trauma. <laughs> but, um, his distributor's doing a fine job. I never heard of them, but he's in Walmart. Uh, the movie's all over the map. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's in Walmart, it's streaming, it's uh, it's more places than uh, fucking uh, Kabuki Man. <laughs> the question I got for you is that uh, I, I, if there's a script, I'll, I'll do a rom-com, I'll do anything. <laughs> if it's really original and has something to say and it doesn't have 2,000 people in it, maybe. Exactly. You know, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. I think uh, people would believe that it might have cost 20 million bucks. I mean, the values are huge, and all the actors and effects and the whales and the sea and the storm and the mud. And yet it costs half a million bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more than that, less. So uh, uh, if there's something like that that comes along, I'd do it in a minute. But I don't have anything in my head. Uh, I've got some, one thing I'm working on that's a, a kind of a very dark, bitter, it's going to start off uh, like a teenage thing and then get uh, uh, Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky uh, mood. It's yes. Kolnikov kind of thing. Okay. And we're just starting to, I don't know if it'll amount to anything. But if something came up, uh, boy, if somebody mm -hmm. sent a wonderful script. Uh, and again, I'm not interested in the money. Um, you know, all I want to do is get the film shot. Uh, I could usually collect the, you know, the money for half a million dollar budget from uh, friends who were willing to uh, give us, uh, you know, yeah. to be patrons of the art. Exactly. And those who invested years ago are, you know, breaking into profit. But they know they're not going <coughs> to... Uh, we had one guy, uh, uh, one uh, uh, company give us 35,000 bucks with no strings attached. Uh, just, just, yeah. Here it is, gift. Like, an, yeah. like a, a foundation. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, that was pretty nice. That is pretty. But we, we can't tell people, hey, we, you invest with us because you're going to make money. No, but they, yeah, they know when they're working with trauma. They, uh -huh, they do it for the for the love of the art. My last question to wrap it up: 
because I can imagine people they have seen my take on the on the on the hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. They've seen our little conversation. They probably want to see the movie too. So is there? best opportunity to just be in New York at the right time? What is the future plan right for now, like... Yeah, we have no... Uh, we've got... I think we're organizing a British uh, tour. Okay. Uh, nobody in uh, Europe has licensed a movie other than Toxic Avenger and, you know, the 12, 15, uh, uh, you know, evergreen movie. Our, our classics, you know, they mm -hmm. relicensed for a small amount of money. And... Uh, uh, so uh, it's going to be a, a very tough. The public's going to have to respond, or something magic has to happen. But but and yeah, I'm not religious, so uh, it doesn't work. But even <laughs> I'm like a big friend of of our Lord and Savior, and 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 I, know, I like Jesus. I very much like Jesus, but I I'm not a fan of this whole uh, Bible thing and all, all that uh, stuff. Great ideas for movies, though, I have to say. But even like, and I know you're not a big fan of, for example, a, a Shutter. Like, even service like that, it, it would fit perfectly fine on a, a streaming service that focuses on more, maybe like, like cold horror type of movies. But they show They're no so interest. They are so scared. They are so yeah. scared. Not Joe Bob Briggs, but Shudder. And um, they, 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 they show our old movies because uh, they're sort of known. They don't, yeah. They're not going to get fired. Oh, Sergeant Kabuki, man, I'm with PD. It was a cartoon. But the hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, A, has the word shit in it, which hasn't helped. And, um, you know, they're afraid. They don't blame them. If they're hacks, you know, they, they, they are worried about their job. They're worried about where they're going to be in 18 months. That's yeah, the average yeah. studio uh, uh, job is 18 months, head of a studio. Hmm. 18 months. So, uh, you know, that's what they're interested in. And they all have these uh, lifestyles. Uh, like uh, elephants in the forest, you know, trumpeting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's my Rolls Royce, which I don't own. Here's my Beverly Hills Mansion, which I don't own. Meanwhile, 50 years later, there's trauma with a thousand movies, which we do own, and a building we own, yeah. and uh, a, a great uh, service to the young people of the world. But <laughs> you, you are famous. It's all, yeah. all, all in your hands. You, Jerome, uh, have a. Uh, the power, trauma is like a little sparrow. You can let it fly or you can... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honored to do my part in letting it fly. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, do you ever get to uh, New York? I've never been to New York. I'm in... Uh... Also, we have, uh, we, we have a house in Manhattan, a, 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 you know, a private house. And uh, our children have left. So there are three uh, guest rooms with your name on them, should you wish to, uh, you know, if you're traveling on your own dime, uh, don't uh, be shy. My sure. wife would love you. She's she's a wonderful person and uh, she's so nice to everybody. You know, she she was commissioner, but she was just as nice to the student filmmaker as, as uh, Oliver Stone or Stallone or, you know, she, Woody Allen. She yeah. introduced Woody Allen to Terry Jones. The, the uh, Monty Python guy oh. uh, at a restaurant. Was, I wish I would have filmed it. I was stupid me. I, I <laughs> didn't think. I was too shy. But um, uh, she's great. She would love me. She, she likes everybody. All the people that, you know, they get, she gets along with everybody. And she doesn't have any uh, snobbiness. You know? mm -hmm. Usually these commissioners uh, know nothing about making movies. And basically it's, again, where they've had dinner during the Sundance Film Festival. That's what's important. Yeah, 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 exactly, and a bunch of lobbying, and uh, but not doing it the actual for the for the actual art itself, but for the for the exactly. little people in it. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Doing it to be a snob. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, we I'll should probably terminate because. Uh, yeah, no, of course, I'll, I'll I'll keep it in mind whenever I'm New York. I'm yeah, definitely sure. now gonna put it higher on my bucket list if I know I have a place to sleep. So uh, yeah, sounds good. Good, good, and uh, uh, keep in touch. Yeah, anything I can do for you, let me know and. Uh, Thank you very much for review. Is the review up yet? Uh, no, I'm because I'm gonna incorporate the interview with the review. But sure. I'm I'm sure. sure through Rocco you'll see it if you want to take a peek at it. Um, it's oh, gonna definitely. be a glaring review, but I'm, I try to keep my videos, you know, like slightly funny, entertaining. So it yeah. might be right up your alley. Well, you love movies, so that's the main thing. Even if you say it stinks, so <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 that, again, the fact that you uh, see something in trauma is uh, really touching. Of, and, uh, of course. Very appreciated. 
No, thank you. I'm uh, I'm I'm honored that you uh, took the time out of your busy schedule to Great time. sit yes. down. Hey, I'm, I was on for like two hours. Yeah, I feel we're definitely ninety minutes in. Thank so, you. thank you so thank much. You. Enjoy the rest of your day, Lloyd. And you too. Um, thank you. Best wishes. Thanks. Thank a you. Lot. Bye bye. And um, well, that's that. Thank you guys for watching. I'm pretty cool. This this whole YouTube stuff. I should do it more often. Uh, <laughs> Next video will actually be up soon, and it'll be similar to this video. And after that, it's um... <sighs> if you don't already, follow me on Instagram. It's just, you know, my account is just horrible.reviews. I know that, you know, like here on YouTube, sometimes I just go missing, I don't show my face anymore. If you follow me on Instagram, that's where my face is. At. Like, there as well, I'll give like updates as to like what's going on. Plus, I, I probably need some of your guys' input for like future videos. So, um, yeah, you guys uh, go ahead and do that. See you guys soon. Cheers, have a nice day. How do I end? It's always like that, right?